Good afternoon, and thank you for listening to Conversations for College Success. Thank you to my subscribers and new listeners, who I hope will become subscribers. This is Instructor Jones, and the topic today is on mentors. And what I'd like to start with is a definition of a mentor. And according to the dictionary, it is a trusted counselor or guide, an experienced person who advises and helps someone with less experience over a period of time. The right mentor can help you throughout your career. If you have the opportunity to find that person, I think that's wonderful. Having said that, though, what I'm going to share with you is there are three mentors that you can look for. One would be a peer mentor. Two would be a faculty mentor. Three would be a professional mentor. So as we talk about the first one, which would be a peer mentor, specifically for freshman and sophomore, if you can find a junior or senior, they may or may not be in your class, they may be assigned to you based on how your college or university is set up, or you may just run into them and see them regularly in the hallway, in classrooms, etc. They speak, they're friendly. You may see them in the tutoring center, almost any place on campus, but you strike up a relationship and you realize they've been on campus longer than you have. So they are someone who can, I'll say, show you the ropes, not only in terms of your classes, but also in terms of information about the college or university. So we can be talking about classes you can take if you happen to be in the same major, or they can be what's called general education classes and how to pair them up. They may even talk to you about professors that they've had that they thought did a really good job and were willing to assist them in areas where they didn't understand certain things and it might take a little bit more time. They'll know the buildings on campus to make sure you know where buildings are. Some other things that you would want to be aware of where are some good study places on campus so you can study without a lot of noise if that's a problem for you, as well as where the writing center is, where the tutoring center is, where other labs and things may be that would be important to know and make it easier for you to find, especially being new. There isn't always a lot of time between classes, so you don't want to be late to class because you didn't know where the classroom was or where the lab was. The other thing that I think becomes important in terms of safety on campus, you don't want to have any issues around being in the wrong place at the wrong time, particularly late at night. Unfortunately, there are a variety of crimes that are happening on campus. And in addition to your personal safety, you don't want to lose your phone or your laptop or have someone steal those items from you. So you wanna always be aware of your surroundings and have a sense of where are the safe places on campus and where are some things that you may want to avoid, especially early, early morning or late, late evening if you're out and taking classes at that time. Another mentor would be a faculty mentor. Now you wanna get to know faculty for a variety of reasons particularly a faculty member in your major, because that can make sure that you are taking the right classes as it relates to electives, as well as requirements. But they can also give you some insight into the career field that you're interested in and you're looking to get into. So that becomes very, very helpful as it relates to moving forward, whether it is applying for an internship or co-op Definitely upon looking for permanent employment upon graduation, oftentimes they're going to ask you for the names of people for recommendations. Oftentimes, if this is your first position after college, they may request that one of your references be
be a faculty member. So you definitely want to have at least one faculty member that you know well. Oftentimes, students will know more than one faculty member, which is also helpful for you moving forward. So these are things that you want to be aware of. The other thing, whether it's a faculty member or a peer mentor, is understanding your syllabus. How does that work? What becomes important? How do you make sure that you achieve all the things you need to achieve? They may have some suggestions about how to study, whether for your notes or their exams. Again, what are your peers doing? What kinds of tools are they using? As well as, are there tools that faculty members can suggest for you? So you want to make sure that as you are acquiring your various mentors, we'll get to the professional one in a minute, that you are learning from them in this process. And then the other thing is then once you become a junior or senior, you can then help out a freshman or sophomore as you run into new students on campus. Everyone can appreciate someone being supportive and assisting them as they're new and learning their ropes. The third mentor, which is also just as important, is what I'm going to call a professional mentor. That's going to be someone in your career field, whether you have met them through a co-op or internship, or whether you have met them from your own work experience, from part-time jobs you may have, or jobs you may pick up on campus, or family members who are in certain career fields and they introduce you to other people who are at their offices and locations. Now, that's one of the reasons why you do want to have professional mentors. You do want to have an opportunity to tour an organization, to see their offices, what they look like, to meet people within those offices, but also to have an opportunity to see the kinds of work that they're doing. You can ask to shadow someone for a half a day or a full day, depending on what they have planned for that day. You also want to learn about their background and experience, how they got to where they are, possibly what colleges and universities they attended, because you may be trying to decide if you want to go for your master's or even a PhD. So talking to people in your career field to find out what they've done in college, as well as maybe why they decided on the major that they had, or the fact that they had and started in one career with one major and were able to transition over and move into a different arena. And the skills that they learned in their major were still very, very helpful to them and their success in a new career direction that they've chosen. So know that there are a variety of people who can help you on your journey as you enter college, as you move through college or your university, as well as upon graduation. When you go to a co-op or internship, again, opportunity to meet people in your career field and connect with them. Now, what becomes important, whether it's a faculty member or a peer, or a professional mentor, if you have the opportunity, and I have to talk to you about LinkedIn pages if you're not familiar, you wanna connect with them on LinkedIn. Why do I say that? People change organizations, whether through promotion or moving out of town or whatever that entails, as well as they may change phone numbers, just a whole host of things can happen. If you are connected with them on LinkedIn, then as their email address changes, as their phone number changes, as they change organizations, you will be able to be notified or you'll at least be able to look them up if they don't post an awful lot on LinkedIn. Because you do have the opportunity, if it's a really great relationship and match, to have this person as your mentor for several years and maybe even into the continuation of your career. You may even follow them in some of the footsteps. You'll definitely be able to learn from them what are the different options and opportunities that they took, why they took them. Not that you have to mirror them, but knowledge is power. It allows you to make the right decisions about your career. And that's always what you want to do. Why did someone do a series of lateral moves 
versus why did someone else decide to just move straight up the ladder? What kind of information did they gain making the choice that they made? Or why did they move out of their career for a while and come back? Or why did they move out permanently and are still successful? All those things are information that you want to learn and understand because it helps you to make the decisions you need to make. The other piece I'm going to say, you probably, at least I hope, build relationships with people who are in your class. So whether you're a freshman, a sophomore, junior, senior, you want to develop those and they can continue over time as well. And then you have people who are at the same level you are in the same level of position you are, and you can bounce questions and ideas off of them, whether it's through your internship opportunities, through your permanent employment upon graduation, or even while you're still in college, have they taken this class? What was their experience? Did they enjoy it? Was it hard? I mean, there's a whole host of things you can ask them to get a sense of what makes sense for you. I'm going to end with the fact that mentors can be extremely helpful to you, not only through your time in college or at a university, but also into your career. Those are people that you can rely on and gain knowledge and experience from that can help you progress. I'm going to say in a much easier time frame and experience than if you didn't. Because if you don't create and connect with mentors, everything you'll do will be by trial and error. And although that is a way to, to learn, oftentimes it's one of the harder or more difficult ways to learn. So hopefully the information as it relates to selecting a mentor and why that becomes important for your success has been helpful for you. I'd like to thank my subscribers and listeners again. And if any of you have any questions, do not hesitate to send them to conversations for college success at hotmail.com. Again, that's conversations for college success at hotmail.com. Have a great day. Bye bye.